I will be resetting the NHL with a fantasy draft and selecting 20 players to build a team. However, I can only choose players that do not have a secondary position. Players that only have one primary position are eligible. I will then simulate a full season with this team in franchise mode. Can we please win a Stanley Cup? Now is about the time we find out which team we're representing for the draft today. We get the Wild of Minnesota. They really do have one of the cooler logos. Hey Jabroni, guess what? No. Absolutely not. I think we should still be able to build a really solid team with this restriction. So let's go ahead and start the career and hope that we get pick number 14. Because that is the first number that came to mind. Really. There is a silver lining here, and that is that we get two picks very close together, but it's at the end. We actually do have quite a lot of options. Most of the players on this first page only have a primary position. Let's go with center playmaking Jack Eichel. And then let's go with left wing sniper Kyle Connor. John Carlson, you better simulate good this time. I'm drafting you again. There's so many wingers that have the dual position. Another sniper on the first line couldn't hurt, right? What about Broccoli? Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing it. The only goalie above 86 overall remaining is Sergei Bobrovsky, and I am also selecting him. I'm not even trying to pick unique players here because we have a cup drought going on, and it needs to come to an end. No, Ekholm, why couldn't you just be left defender? Gustav Forsling, left defenseman. Pretty good, especially for 2.6. Very good, actually. Nobody wants Latang for some reason. It might be because he's 36 and still has five years left, but guess what? Don't matter, because we're doing a one-year fantasy draft. Welcome aboard. All right, it started out pretty easy, but now it's hitting me like an RKO, because out of nowhere, we can't find single position players that aren't making 10 million bucks. Maximus Passia ready. Another sniper. We currently only have our three forwards, so... I really have to start drafting some, and I'm going to immediately. Brendan Dillon, good defensive defenseman. I think he is going to be great for that second pairing, so let's scoop him up now. He is exclusive to the wing of the right variety. Tom Wilson also has an ability. Is he making a little too much? Maybe. But it is what it is. A lot of centers have a secondary position, but Jonathan Taves doesn't, and his face-off rating is still unbelievable. I suppose you're going to be our second-line center there, Johnny. Jordan Eberle is also exclusive to the right wing. He is a sniper. The salary cap crunch is going to be kind of intense at the end, but whatever. We'll figure it out later. Welcome to the team, Jeberly. I guess that's kind of the thing with depth players, is that they're more versatile, so you kind of throw them wherever, where the studs... They usually stick to their position, so I don't know. We're kind of in one here. Lars Eller is going to work. He's a centerman. Thank you, Miles Wood. A left winger exclusively, and that salary is doable. Welcome to the Minnesota Wild. I've managed to find two players here in Jesper Fast and William Carrier. Fast at 2.4 might be doable, but Carrier is definitely joining the team. I found a good centerman for us. Doesn't have the best face-offs in the world, but is exclusive to the C spot. 80 overall, and salary is definitely doable. I found our last left defenseman in Derek Forber. Guy's a unit, six foot four, defensive defenseman. He was drafted in the first round, I didn't know that. We need three players. We got 5.7 to do it. I like our spot right now. We should be able to make Jesper fit in. So let's go ahead and scoop him up now. And then we have two players left. At the moment, we require a right-handed defenseman, Kevin Shattenkirk. I don't know if offensive and defensive defensemen have good chemistry, but I guess we're going to find out because he's making a milli and he's 82 overall. We just need a backup goalie. 2.2. So that gives us options. We could go with the Smith. We could go with Jonathan Quick. Casey's 83 overall. That is my only reasoning. Our final selection. Let's put the team together. The draft summary doesn't look too bad. We should have a good first line. Defensemen should be solid. Our starting goaltender's pretty good. Hopefully the chemistry works out for us. Moment of truth. Edit lines. Come on. Give me something decent at least. I know Jabroni's gonna pop up. Okay, we got the plus five on the first line. That's good. But then... What happens after that? You know what? It's fine. It's not red. Defensive chemistry. All zeros. That's interesting. And also, oh. Okay, I kind of get where you're coming from there. 
Jabroni. Just gonna let the lines kind of sit how they are. Goaltending, obviously, we got Bob backed up by DeSmith. Kyle Connor gets the most points with 86, and we make the playoffs with 44 wins. Let's simulate. We're off to a great start here, and we lose. I knew that was gonna happen as soon as I chimed in. Let's go, boys! We're unreal! 9-3-0? and oh? Maybe this is one of the better teams I've built? Or you can just go and lose four games in a row. Yeah. We don't need to win. 10-5 loss followed by a 7-5 loss. That is unacceptable. Hold on, timeout. I just realized I didn't look into the lines too much, so hopefully it was everybody I drafted. Or if not, hopefully they just have the primary position. I'm just gonna double check them all right now to make sure that we have single positions. We do. I don't wanna get ahead of ourselves here, but we should be playoff bound at the very least. So we do have a chance at a Stanley Cup this year. This sim. Head coach Eugene McGillis has been canned. I kind of want to go look, but at the same time, why fix what isn't broken? Our team is taking names right now. We're going to be at 40 wins at the trade deadline. That might be a record for me. Make it 43. Why not? Okay. Yeah, just lose both of those. Didn't want that anyway. Actually, I was just kidding. <laughs> we could go after players, but why would we? With as many wins as we have, there's no point. I mostly just don't want to screw things up, you know? Trade like a first round pick, get a good player. It's like, yeah, we should be better, right? Wrong. And on that note, I have scared myself out of trading. Get me out of here. Pelik Zucker and a fourth headed to Montreal in exchange for two firsts. That is a hefty price. Shea and Howla are now a part of the New York Islanders organization and they gave up a first and a second. Tara Sancho and a fourth packaged to New Jersey in exchange for a first. A lot of first rounds being moved around here. This team wouldn't dare have a post-trade deadline collapse. No. I'm not buying it. I feel like we could be in contention for the President's Trophy, but I see the Predators just overtook us. We're gonna have to have a good end to the year in order for that to be a possibility. No, it's not gonna happen. But we are in the playoffs. 105 points would get us second in the Central Division. 48 wins. The Smashville Predators had 51 wins. And then Colorado down here with 92 points. Incredible season for the Golden Knights. They put up 113. This is a finesse job. Senators, no. Blues, nope. Sabres, mm-mm. Jets, no. Pittsburgh, though. Oh, yeah. 20th. The Jerks did not have a good time. 64 points. Ooh. They had Coyle, Perron, and Konechny as their first line. Darlene, Moser. Ottinger and Net, though. They do have Otter. A pleasant surprise at the hands of Kyle Connor. And how about Jack Eichel also having 94 points? Besser, 87. So that whole first line just did amazing. Latang had 58 points, so he got more than anyone on the second line. But they also did pretty good. Bobrovsky had an amazing record. Four shutouts and a 909 save percentage. DeSmith had pretty good backup numbers. Yeah, 907, 304. Good job. Even John Carlson put up 51, so... Clearly, these two do bits. Freddie Anderson leads goaltenders with 42 wins. He had a 913 save percentage, three shutouts. Kachekov was right there. We actually have a bunch of goalies with 41 wins, so that was a close race. Your Norris winner, Quinn Hughes. There's no way he doesn't get it. 10 points up on the next defender, which is Adam Fox. He was also a plus 30. Fox was a plus 36, but I mean... 73 hamburger helpers, are you kidding me? The Art Ross will be going to Pappy, who got 106 points and evenly split Genos and Apples. It looks like he has the Rocket Richard locked down as well. Let's double check. Yeah, McKinnon had 51. Ovi had 50. I don't know if that's happening anymore. The President's Trophy winning Golden Knights had Ovechkin, Reinhardt, and Marcheseau. So yeah, Reinhardt definitely helped out Ovi. Their second line was Kopitar, Moore, and Fisher. Then they had Bordalo, Domi, and Fabry. It's a very interesting team. Luke Hughes and DeMello as the top pairing. Zadorov, Lilligren. What a weird team. Goaltending, they had Igor. All right, y'all, yeah, that answers all my questions. And here's our first round opponent. Timo Meyer, Pavelski, and Nylander. Will Nye the hockey guy. Good first line. Second line's good. Third line is kind of concerning. And they have Cooley on the fourth. What is going on? I think we're in one here. This is going to be a tough series. Petrangelo and Gostas Bear, Doomlin, Pareko. In net, they have, oh my word. First three games, everybody knows the rules. Come on now. Don't go down in the first round. That is a horrible start. one nothing, really? Second game is an overtime loss. Okay, we finally won one. Can we make it a best of three? That's a huge win. 
Okay, come on, come on. No, that's not good. That is good. Kyle Connor scoring on either our first or second shot of the game. Peeper can't capitalize, unfortunately. Power play for the Avalanche. We managed to kill it off. Come on, let's push seven here. Let's win. And let's win the Stanley Cup. You know, it can't be that hard, right? I don't recall asking for your input, Pavelski. Another power play. Who's taking all these penalties? Smarten up, boys. Third period. Game is tied at one. That's awesome. That is awesome. Do not go to overtime. I cannot handle it. Just fend him off. Fend him off. Bob is going to steal us a game here if we manage to win this one. We killed off a last minute penalty. What a win. First start without a doubt. That is extremely deserved. Game seven. This is what it all comes down to. It's win or loss, in or out. Not a good start. Coleman buries one on Bob. Second shot of the game. Okay. So that's how it's going to be. 3 nothing. Boone the Bounty Hunter might have just put this game out of reach. Oh? Let them cook. That's a good start to the third. I thought that was going to be us tying it up. I really did. Six and a half left. We're down by two. Yeah, we're not going to. Ah, it's done. Wow, come on, man. The Stanley Cup final is between the Ducks and the Rangers. Let's go see what their teams look like. Oh, wow. They got Bedsy, Brat, and Erickson Eck. They just said, you know what? I don't want gold abilities. Just give me all the silver. And evidently, it's working out for them. Their defense all around is just really good, as a matter of fact. And in net, they have Kachekov. That's right. I kind of remember seeing that. What is this? How did they make it to the Stanley Cup final? It does not make sense. They have Victor Hedman, sure. Gerard, good player. But they have some other defensemen that aren't amazing. Aiden Hill and Nett, no. This team's a mystery to me. They should not be in the Stanley Cup finals. I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being a sweep, but let's go. Of course. Of course the Rangers win. They're going to win the Cup, aren't they? With that roster. Yep. 4-1. Just shows you how much I know about this game. Calder Cup goes to the Ontario Reign. I don't know if I've told this story before, but I ordered a package from Amazon. This would have been years ago, but it said it was in Ontario, CA, and I was gassed. I'm like, okay, maybe it'll come sooner than expected. Why is the date still so far away? And then I found out it was in Ontario, California, not Ontario, Canada. Good times. What the heck? Lars Eller was six points. Let's go. But yeah, first line did all right. They were... Point a game on average, which is good. Six penalty minutes. I thought it was going to be more than that. That's actually not too bad. This guy cannot be blamed whatsoever. 921, 254. Sergey, you played phenomenal. John Carlson did not have a good time. Was a dash four and only got two points in seven games. Yikes. Aiden Hill, 16, 7, and 1. One shutout, 920 save percentage, 260 GAA. Insane. Hedman had nine more points than the next defender, which to be fair, Morrissey only played 17 games, but still can't discredit almost point a game here for Victor. He's definitely winning Rookie of the Year. He is most likely going to... No, he won't because he's on the Ducks. He's not going to get the Conn Smythe. Sveshnikov probably will. Austin Matthews brings the Art Hart combo back. The Norris goes to Quinn Hughes. The Lady Bank to Kyle Connor. We got something. Bedsy did get Rookie of the Year. Victor Hedman with the Conn Smythe. Oh, Victor Hedman with the Conn Smythe. Wow. Congratulations, sir. Jeremy Swayman is your Vesna winner. The William M. Jennings goes to Igor Shesterkin and Pavel. Joel Edmondson awarded the Bill Masterton. Brooks gets the Adams. Selkie is assigned to Barkov. Matthews with another one. And how about one more? Just for good measure. Here be your playoff tree. I feel like we have to do the inverse of this draft now. And only draft players that do have a secondary position. I thought this team might have had a shot, but... Nope, first rounded, again. If you could smash that like button, it'd be tremendously appreciated. Subscribe if you're feeling up to it. If you try this draft, let me know how yours went in the comments down below. Let me know any other draft ideas. And on that note, I'll see you soon.